Baker for the Charter Review Advisory Committee. And then um, I'll do roll call. And then what I'll do is I'll, the if I can get a motion after that for the election of a vice chair. So that way we can have a vice chair run the meeting. Okay. So I'll do roll call. Let me get this. Here. Okay. So um, committee member Dewey-Jack. Here. Committee member Gaddis is absent. Committee member Maruko. Here. Committee member Naraya. Here. Committee member Alternate committee member Whittem. Here. Committee member Prinsler. Here. And alternate member uh, Tavares. Here. Thank you. Okay, so if I can get um, a motion to um, move the election of officer for vice chair, and we'll do that, and then we'll do the flag. So moved. moved. Okay. Oh, second. Thank you. So then I guess can I um, have any nominations for vice chair? I would move no, uh, committee member Narian for the position of vice chair. Second. Okay. <laughs> well, first of all, I've got a look on your face. I, I, I wouldn't know. I wouldn't have the best person I've got the experience to do it possibly. That's why I wasn't sure. I, okay. I, I say go for it. It's really easy to pick up. All you're doing is presiding over the group of people here. So I think you're more than qualified having seen us do it, sir. <laughs> And there's no time, no time like the president to step up. To step up. Yeah. Yeah. Go for it. Sure. I think it's unanimous. Do you accept? Do you accept? Sure. Okay. Okay, so then all those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, any um, objections? Okay. So welcome Unanimously. to Herding Cats. Yes. Okay, yes. so um, you will be a vice chair, so you will run the meeting tonight. Great. So you can go ahead and start with the um, salute to the flag. Everyone please rise. Ready to begin. I pledge allegiance to, to the flag of the United States, States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. So what's next? <laughs> Take it slow. Salute to the flag. So the approve, the, approve the order agenda, item D. So moved. Second. We just did, we did that oh. by changing the order of the agenda. Oh, okay. Oh, there you go. All right, blue folder items, additional backup materials. We have none. Okay, now item F, um, consent calendar. Just oh, okay. Business items except those formally noticed <clears throat> Business items except those formally noticed for public hearing or discussion are assigned to the consent calendar. The commission members may request that any consent calendar items be removed, discussed, and act upon separately. Items removed from the consent calendar will be taken up under the excluded consent calendar section below. Those items remaining on a consent calendar will be approved in one, of the, one motion following oral com communications. I would like to have the... I actually have some questions on the minutes, so I would like to move that into the excluded consent calendar. Okay. Now what do I... Both of them or, or... just I I have these general questions. If you want to answer them now, we can probably take care of it as, as a consent calendar item, but I, I thought that we have a discussion as excluded. Ex sorry. Go ahead. So so you say exclude, excluded? Or right. So we'll exclude, ex exclude, 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 exclude item F2. So then I need a motion for Motion to approve the affidavit. Second. Senator, call, call a vote? Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. I just call each member or what? Oh, so, sorry. Mm -hmm. You can just ask uh, oh. who, who wants to vote for yes and then. Who wants to vote for Everybody in favor. Everyone in favor? Aye. 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 So moved. Right. Any, <laughs> Any opposed? Any opposed? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Oh, any public comment? Oh, yes. Uh, no public comment. I have no e comments or um, okay. Zoom. Thank okay. you. <clears throat> okay. 
F2. F2? Yes. Sorry. That's yeah. Item J, right? No, we're going F2. F2. Okay, approve the following charter review. No. No, that's right. You see, you're still okay, so, oh, that's, I know this is your first time doing this. I don't want to overstep myself, but yeah, your, one of your main objectives is to try to keep the order of us cats up here. So I won't talk until you say you recognize me to talk. Okay. That's the same that way we don't all talk Can about it. Okay, so mm -hmm. um, the question I had, um, Madam Clerk, is when we had our historical commission meeting, we had a discussion about whether these are actually minutes that are being presented or just detailed notes and the interaction that goes on between the staff people and presenting what's presented or is just the transcript and is thrown together. And with our commission, it was, there's no review by the staff and it just goes into the paper. So I was just wondering if that's what's being done here, because that kind of changes the dynamic of well, the, the level of review. The minutes should be summary minutes, shouldn't be transcript. We don't have the, it's the capability of doing transcripts is too um, expensive and costly. So we do summary. We don't do action minutes, but we do summary. So we try to get um, as much as we can into this into the minutes. So uh, is it? Is so, it... but but what happens is when we when we get council minutes, we review it. When we get charter review minutes, uh, we review it. Our department review, either I yeah. or my chief deputy reviews it. Um, okay. And then if there's any issues, like if you bring in any issues, then we go back and review it before we correct it because we want to make sure we're on the same page. So there is a staff interaction right. on the minutes themselves before they actually get presented to us. Well, for council and charter. So now if you're saying that some of the other commissions or the historical commission, the staff is not, because they should be reviewing it also, their director, because they sign off on those minutes. Right. So they should review it and then provide it to you. And then if you have questions, but yeah, we do it came summary. off because of the misspelling of one of the people we were honoring with an adjournment, and it's oh. like, um, yeah, that should they should catch that. So um, since you brought it to my attention, I will make sure that is communicated to the liaisons. Yeah, we ended up and the directors. Yeah, we ended up denying the minutes because they were just detailed notes and they weren't actually a summary of the action. Oh, I so. see. Okay. Yeah, but the issue is this has always been an issue that. As long as there's backup, particularly backup nowadays with with both online and uh, and and uh, uh, accessible oh, video, the video, the, the need to have have just a, a, a an action minutes is basically what what these the, these things are all about. If the staff isn't doing the proper work, then then it's really the city manager who should know. Rather, well, for the minutes, we're in charge of the minutes. No, but for, for the other no, for the other commissions, commissions as well. Right, we are. We're you know we're the or ones that hire the minute secretary. We're the ones that work with the liaisons. So if there's any issues, um, they should also come to us, and or you can contact your email me, and then we can have that discussion. Yeah, she does a really great job with the detail on it. So I'm I'm really happy, right. and I can understand why we need it for this group, because we would right. look at it 20 years from right. now and say that what they were talking about. But I just wanted to be clear that some staff eyes have actually reviewed it. And you're telling me, yes, There's then I don't have an issue with it. So I would actually move that we approve the minutes. Okay. Second. Okay. <clears throat> Public comment? Oh, sorry. Yeah. No, uh, <laughs> yeah, no, that's what you would okay. ask. Yes. Um, yes, I have. Um, let me double check here. None on Zoom and no e-comments. So we're, we're good. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Um, any opposed? Um, then what do I say next? <laughs> what? I would actually recommend if we do vote on something that you say that this is the outcome of the, the outcome of the unanimous 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 vote for the consent calendar approval. This is the excluded consent calendar. Excluded, so excluded consent calendar items. items. Yeah. Unanimous vote for you know, excluded consent calendar items. Right. Yep. Okay. Now with item H. Mm -hmm. Okay. Item H. Public participation. Public participation on non-agenda items. This section is intended to provide members of the public with the opportunity to comment on any subject that does not appear on the agenda for action. 
The section is limited to this section is limited to 30 minutes. Each speaker will be afforded three minutes to address the commission. Each speaker will be permitted to speak only once. Written requests will written requests, if any, will be considered first under this section. Item. We have none. none? Yes. Um, any public comments from the, the Zoom or Unless this gentleman wants to speak? <laughs> <laughs> so no. Okay. Yeah, no e comments or no um, Zoom. We move on. Then move to next. Then move on. Move on to item eight. Item I. Items continued from previous agendas. Discussion and possible action regarding Article Eleven, Section Eleven Point Two, City Attorney. Yeah, that was my item. And, and uh, if you saw on the uh, uh, on the uh, agenda, uh, documents twelve and thirteen. You, you would ask that I, I, I take what we had discussed in the past and put it into a form that included track changes, as and I also included a, a, a cleaned up copy, so uh, how it would look without any of the track changes in it. As I understand it, there has been a consultant hired to Michael Colin Tuono, is it to hire oh. to uh, put it into? Uh, so I guess this is this is where we. Leave it to them if, if uh, everybody's okay with the uh, way that the uh, track changes worked. So, committee, committee member Morocco, committee made, committee member Morocco. I, I don't know where Mr. Webb went, but um, I was at that meeting, and so I think your summation is correct that they did approve hiring the person. I didn't know if he was supposed to appear by Zoom today, or that for next month, and that was the piece that Mr. Webb would be able to fill in. But he was approved on the list of approved council. Mm -hmm. And the, the the purpose of this of the track changes was to take what we had discussed over the past couple of yep. meetings and put it into a form that that uh, the uh, consultant can look at to organize it for presentation to the city council as a uh, as as an option. And I think this is what we uh, what we had discussed. Um, by, by taking, there are actually two parts. Section 10, which has a list of the elected officials. So my assumption is that if, if the, the thing that the council is going to look at is to remove the city attorney as an elected official, that has to be deleted. So that's why that first part of it is there. Mm -hmm. the, the second part takes out any references to election out of section 11.2, which is the city attorney. It doesn't specifically change any of the activities that they do, but it all it does is take out any reference to the election process. So this is a package of not electing, or moving from elected to appointed city attorney. So it, it, it is to be presented to the city council as, it, it, do you want to put this on the, on, on the ballot? I did want to clarify again, I think the other piece that they voted on, which I thought was very unusual, is they um, wanted this to be for the 2028 position, so it wasn't going to impact 2025. Um, and I actually spoke up on it because it's like, I don't want to serve on this committee for five years. So I think the ultimate result was, I, I proposed to them that we do our work, finish it off, send it off to the council, right. let them figure out how they want to present it. But they were talking specifically that it wouldn't go into effect until uh, the 2028 term. And I think that was the response to a, a, an email, a letter to the editor about this process. Well, Mr. Webb, I see you shaking your head. Well, it's going to be on the no sooner, it'll be on the November 2026 election and it'll go into effect on the April 2029 term. Mm -hmm. So I was shaking my head only at the 2028. Um, and I don't think it was in regards to the email uh, letter to the editor and particularly, I think it was more of the concern of um, timing in that you have to put it on the November general election because of a change in state law that says it has to be on the November election and there are a series of um, exceptions. Um, and one of them is that it doesn't affect change in status of any employee. 
And so in 2016, the clerk, uh, the treasurer wanted to change the job from full-time to part-time. And um, the uh, county clerk informed that, um, the county registrar informed the clerk that that couldn't be on our March election. It had to go on the November election because the treasurer who was um, proposing it would put it on the March election. So, and if it doesn't, if it doesn't, it's run by the county. So there's no way of knowing, and it's a presidential election. There's no way of knowing if the clerk will even have the results um, before the end of the election period. And um, there was concern from the majority of the council that, well, who's going to run? And because, as you know, you, you start building a campaign long before the nomination period. Who's going to do that um, if, if it's may not even exist. And then what do you happen if you close the nominations and then it passes? And the other, you know, I, I'll, I'll be blunt. I, I think in part because of the people and groups who have reached out to me, I, I find it very unlikely that this will pass. I think it will suffer the same result it has in every time it's been put on the ballot. Uh, you had talked about on another issue, I think it was the clerk's issue, it would be difficult to propose something and have success if the incumbent was opposing it. I won't be in the incumbent because I'm not running again, um, but I will, as a resident, fully oppose it. The clerk informed me because we had to have someone else do the impartial analysis that she's going to oppose it and will seek to assist with the argument against. Uh, you know Chief Kaufman, who has worked both for uh, a city with an appointed city attorney and do function office. He opposes it. A, a number of that, uh, groups that I'm not uh, authorized to disclose. So I find it very unlikely it will pass and it will have the impact of doing one of the things that um, committee member Pinsler mentioned um, he wanted to get you know more people eligible to be city attorney, and it would have the unintended consequence of having fewer people run if, as I firmly believe, it won't be um, be passed by the voters. So I think it was more a timing issue, and um, so you have two two factors: the indication to the extent that it makes a difference how you phrase the charter amendment um, is that it will be on the ballot in November 2026, but uh, they did approve a contract with Colantuno now. Uh, we don't have it executed because they amended it after he signed it uh, to make clear that he was personally doing the work and not any of the other people in his firm. He had told that that was the case to Mr. Wazanski, um, but so we'll, we'll, we'll amend that. And um, they reiterated that you're to look at, um, you know, that you're free to look at all options. There was a specific referral that started that all off by new council member Barrett, seconded by Obaji to have you look at the Long Beach model. Mm -hmm. Uh, which I think uh, initially only council uh, committee member Tabaris had um, had brought up splitting the the criminal and civil. The Long Beach model, um, I don't know if it's better or worse. I can think of reasons that it may be more expensive. I could also see that there might be ways to change the budget to where it be actually save money if we brought more of the litigation in-house, which the council direction is they eliminated the city attorney's paralegal um, back in uh, 2028, I think. And so, you know, I, I don't believe there was any um, in-house litigation prior. 
I think that we changed that with pitches motions because that was already always outsourced. And we're looking towards getting the, the cases that we get a lot of, the slip and falls, things like that, that could be done more efficiently, but then I'd be paying an in-house attorney to do uh, discovery, which wasn't, you know, not necessarily the best use. If you want to, and I did object, um, as I've mentioned while they were both here, to the to the report in that it mentioned, you know, or they mentioned uh, the split model, but the council hadn't really, the committee hadn't really had a discussion of, of that. The committee can choose just to pass the package, send it on to the council, or excuse me, I'll send it to Colantuno. Um, he'll have access to the charter. Um, I don't know if, if, if you're just sending a package, I don't know how much, you know, I don't know what his job is. I always envision, like every other charter amendment, you were sending proposed language that, you know, the council could choose to do. Um, and if that proposed language was, was what you, was your, you know, hey, intent. this is most of the time, then that absolutely could form the basis of a charter amendment. He'll, uh, I will ask him to review separate sections of the charter to make certain anything that would be inconsistent with an appointed city attorney would be done. So you could do that all at once. On the other hand, if you want to explore the Long Beach model where they're both elected, but you separate the jobs, um, it won't satisfy the we're like every other city, but as I mentioned a zillion times. Even less like every other city. <laughs> what? It'll be even less like every other city. Yeah, but it will, I think. So when I've, when the five times I ran, I was opposed three, unopposed twice. And, you know, these things tend to go in cycles. Um, District five, you know, Councilman Barrett was unopposed. We've had elections where both. It was empty the first time around. And, um, but well, she had a, a write-in candidate, I yeah, think. Yeah, well, sort of. Yeah, so not technically <laughs> in a vote, but we'd had one where both um, Kilroy and I think Ost were unopposed. Uh, we had an election where the mayor, uh, Mayor June was unopposed. Um, and so I don't know that it's any more or less, but I would think you would get many more attorneys running for the two jobs if they were split than the one because Redondo has no shortage of attorneys uh, living in here. And, but there is a shortage of people who have experience in both prosecution and municipal civil law. And they're two very different jobs. So if, if unlike me, you didn't come from uh, another dual function city before I came here where you're doing, you know, I was the counsel for the Hawthorne Municipal Airport at, at one point in time, plus doing prosecution, then there are limited people who can do both jobs. I haven't had any opponents who were qualified for both parts. They were either a prosecutor and qualified only for the criminal or only civil attorneys and quali uh, um, qualified for the only. I only mention this in depth and it's entirely up to you. I don't know that I favor it, uh, but it's not something that I would oppose because the ultimate choice still remains with the voters for each position. It's the voters choosing civil and the voters tr uh, choosing criminal. And I do think it'd be easier both for both positions because you could have prosecutors, other DAs challenge for the city prosecutor position, and you could have people who have experience in civil law or you know focused on municipal law that could do that. But it's entirely up to you. If you wanna do that, I would certainly request um, the uh, LA Long Beach city prosecutor to come speak, and then I would also check with the Long Beach City Attorney if they can um, come speak. Um, 
There are some negatives I could thank. There was once when the former Long Beach City prosecutor challenged the former Long Beach City attorney, and you can imagine there's that some was, that turmoil was that was for, you know, it, there. But, you know, so anyways, it, it, the goal is just to be like everyone else, then you have to wonder why we're keeping prosecution, because everyone else, it's this, basically the same number, dual function versus uh, the number of elected city attorneys. If the job is to expand the number of people who are running for the two offices, I certainly think you would have more candidates for, more qualified candidates for one of the jobs versus the combined job. Um, first of all, I'm into uniqueness. I'm not into being everybody, so. Because uh, you bring this up several times. Well, you're, the thing, the time that I know that's the I, primary. I, I, I watched yeah. the other meeting. I, okay. the meeting. I wasn't here. I, I watched that. I'll get <laughs> I get time uh, out I, of four hundred and something. Yeah, I'll I, take I, one. I understand. <laughs> okay, it's been a pain in my ass. So I'm not, anyway, um, could you explain why we have to be on the November twenty-sixth uh, ballot? Well, the council. I know. I know. The state passed the law, you know, and but then we fought them and we won. Different law, different law. Okay, so well, the, the law, the law that we, so only the charter amendment and there, um, that's a statewide concern. We didn't challenge them on that. They try, so the only thing that has to be is a charter amendment that doesn't fit with, you know, and I forget what the other one is. Um, so only a charter amendment has and, to be in the uniformed. Uh, elections cycle. only certain charter amendments have to be it's and uh, it gets even finer then it does and so like our the your five amendments that you uh passed could all be on the march election no none of them change but anything that for example of what you're considering now if you're to change the job status of the clerk from mm -hmm. elected to appointed or you're to change uh her from um full-time to part-time that would have to be on the November ballot. And I think it was Bell, because they had had like a charter amendment on, I, I, I'm not certain of the date, but it was some like off date, like the Friday after Thanksgiving. It was Bell and it was in June. I yeah, think. or it's just, it was some day. And so that's why they passed that. What we fought was SB 415. And SB 415, uh, we argued three things. One, it didn't apply to charter cities. They know how to write something that applies to charter city. It didn't say charter city anywhere. In fact, the League of California Cities didn't oppose it because they didn't think it applied to charter cities. Um, thereafter, the former attorney general issued an opinion, advisory opinion, that uh, it applies to charter cities. And so charter cities started, you know, changing to comply with the law. Uh, the second part was that uh, it couldn't because of a municipal affair. It's specifically mentioned in the Constitution that the voters get to choose, you know, how our elections are, are carried out. And the third part, it wasn't narrowly tailored because they set a test that was so high. So you could either have it in November or in the primary, but the test was so hard that the statewide primary didn't satisfy their own test. And so it the that was their defect though. That wasn't our defect. Well, yeah, but then the law is yeah, right. is not constitutional. At the trial court level, I argued and the court said he did think it applied to charter cities, but that it couldn't, that it was a municipal affair. The state appealed it. Uh, I had an outside um, appellate specialist argue it before the Court of Appeals. They took the more diplomatic of it doesn't apply to charter cities. So the state could redo another SB 415, but in the meantime, most of the charter cities extended their terms. It's not hard to convince a politician to vote to extend their term when they have to. And, um, and they were extended to November. But now what we're finding is, now that the, <laughs> this, the county has no competition, the cost have soared for having a November election. Mm -hmm. And so we've saved like hundreds of thousands of dollars on every election by able to, to, to be able to keep it. There are arguments for and against. There are fewer people vote in March elections. Um, but on the other hand, they can pay attention to the city races. Whereas on the November election, you have a lot of um, 
you have a, a oh, lot of yeah, more voice. vote, but you have voter, yeah, foul, fatigue. And we, we, you know, remember you always had talked about that. That's one thing we agree on. And so we got uh, um, uh, an expert to sign a declaration talking about the, uh, the ballot fatigue. And so, you know, we won that. But it's a different issue than well, the... Well, I guess what I'm having a hard time, neither any changes that we make are not going to affect anybody that's in office now or is elected because if you make the change in 2026 it doesn't take effect to the following election well they said that yes they said they do not want it taking effect till 2029 if, you, if you're going to do any change of the the clerk or treasurer it would make sense to do it, and there was a discussion to do it in the November election, if it changes the status. If it doesn't change the status, then you can do it in the March election, which is much more, um, I really much less costly. I really costly. don't want to prolong this, but okay. I'm having a hard time separating out a municipal concern but, uh, and a statewide concern and how we've, we've kind of fallen into the statewide concern. Me, Joe. Part. Maybe, maybe I can help. Please. Please. The, if it's November 2024, by the time you certify the ballot, it's almost butting up against the Nomination period. Of, I'm not talking about the year. I'm not. I'm talking about why November, November versus why November, why November and not and not March. I mean, it's a municipal concern issue. I mean, whether to have the city, of, as you have pointed I agree. out, I agree. So all these people have, you know, have different. Uh, I'll say. City attorneys and city of clerks appointed or whatever you've had. Well, let's just say they weren't as stupid with this law as they were with the other one. Yes, <laughs> that is. Well, I, I, ne I never worry about somebody else's ox being gored. I only worry about mine. Okay, <laughs> just just well, so it's clear. And, and no one has challenged it, and the council hasn't given direction to challenge that. It, it, the, and the council probably, speaking bluntly, wouldn't have challenged that if they could agree on what to do with the. Um, to shorten or lengthen the terms. And so you oh, had... Yeah, I do remember that. that, was, that, yes. that, that was part of it. And so, so we were stuck in an endless cycle and we were running against where they could take certain enforcement action. And so I, I expressed an opinion that, that was correct and it turned out to be what I believed and turned out to be correct. Uh, we couldn't get any other cities to join us. Um, that, that was... A violation of home rule. Okay. And, we, and on that bill, we won. No one's challenged the other bill, and it's been some time since. Okay. Well, I'm, I'm just trying to understand. So another what issue we can too. And what we can't do with those cities who are now with the county. So in a presidential election, if they're in March, they're okay. But then when it's the government, I mean governor's race, it goes to June. Yeah, right. So yeah. now you've got different council members in different, more longer terms. So no, I, I got that part, but that, that, that doesn't crazy. affect us. I mean, that, doesn't no. affect us. That, that doesn't affect us at all. I mean, so I'm not trying to understand why we're tied to a date that basically is a municipal concern and and somebody shuffled it over to yes. a statewide concern. That, that's what I'm trying to, yes. to get through my thick skull. Committee member Pilsner? Yeah, a couple things. To get back to the issue of, of the Long Beach. The, the purpose of this was to resolve this particular concept. So the, the, the curve of, of city attorney and city prosecutor both being elected, uh, we can discuss. And I, I don't think they've, have they formally? They wanted you to look at every option. Okay. And so And you've got more time. So if you just want to send this up and go, you know, we're not interested. The important thing is to, to have it, um, to have it uh, appointed like most cities do, then you can be done in two months. And no, I, I, I think it's it's probably worth looking into. I, yeah. I, I do think, though, that that we're not as Long Beach is seven times bigger than we are, so there are more possibilities of, of candidates. Uh, I do think that that uh, uh, this may be an issue again of. of how many people are going to want to run for this job? And a lot of it will depend on what the, what the salary is going to be and what the what. So it, it could very well be that that you can, you, you create it and, no, and nobody or one person runs again. Uh, 
I think that we should agendize that particular thing, but I think we should just close on this, set it, if, if we want to set it aside and put it into a package that we ultimately send up, I think that's fine. Let's just get this off the plate and, and deal with just this particular issue. And to, to go back to what I, what I, I wrote in here, you, you, you may notice that there are, uh, I've taken out the he's and, the, and the, the gender focus, so all of that's in there as well. But to, to a great extent, the verbiage is very similar, if you recall in the, the document that I gave you the last time, that a lot of cities use the same verbiage for what the city attorney you does. You go with wanting to be like everybody else. Yeah. You know? It's what it's what the city attorney. It's what most cities do, and in fact, it was in our our charter as well. Mostly, what the city attorney does. So you'll see some a few changes, but they all have to do with the election process, <laughs> as opposed to the the work that the city attorney does. And if we want to set this aside until we put a full, full package together, I just want to get this off the plate and say this is this is this is meaning the city this attorney, is attorney city attorney issue. This particular this version is, of it is done. Member Morocco, mm -hmm. I, I agree with uh, Commissioner uh, Committee Member Pinsler. Uh, I voted. I was the only one voting against having this as an appointed position, but. It's up to the council. Well, our job is just to recommend stuff mm -hmm. to the council. Mm -hmm. They can figure out when it goes into effect. We're doing our job by at least analyzing and make a recommendation. So if we don't want to be tied to a specific data when it goes into effect, the council can figure it out. We can put it in our report saying, okay, we, we didn't consider this, but this is some of the options ultimately. With that, we've done our job with regard to that. Um, the Long Beach model, I didn't see it in the materials we have. It's not. I, I know it's not. I don't know why we haven't been presented with it since it's still part of the same agendized item on it. Um, but I would like to be able to at least see a copy of that. Um, and going back to that Long Beach model and the city prosecutor, so do we, if we, make up a new position called city prosecutor out of this whole thing, do we have to go through this whole process with the DAs basically saying that, you know, you can't do this because, no, okay, so that's, that's I'm talking good. to a former city prosecutor. <laughs> but you wouldn't if you did it at the same time. Okay. If you did it at the same time, then you wouldn't need to get um, permission from the, from the, um, from the DA. Okay. And so when do you think we can see the Long Beach model? This is his Long Beach elected here. Is it, you just recommending us so to go it to was on, It was on my, I don't think we gave the actual language, but it was on one of the first things I gave you okay. in terms of, so again, everybody's one way, but that ignores the fact that we're a dual function office. And so I, I gave you a, a chart that dual function offices are kind of split, where it's like 50-50, where the city attorney is appointed, 50-50, where the city attorney is elected, and one where the city attorney is essentially um, can only be removed for cause, which is Torrance, where they have civil service protection once they're, um, once they're solicited, uh, once they're appointed. And the one other exception is Long Beach, where they have a elected city attorney and a separately elected uh, city prosecutor, and and those jobs are, are different. I can I can bring back it, if the committee wants to discuss it and look at it, um, then I, I can look at it, or you can just say to the council we considered it and we think the important thing is to um, have it appointed. Okay. I'm sorry, were you not done? Uh, I, the only question yeah, I had is the uh, the person that was from Grass Valley, mm -hmm. are, did we as a group want to talk to him before we present all the package to him so we can find out exactly what we're interested in? Or And I guess he's appearing by Zoom on everything. Yeah, well, it would be the language. And, and I see the language this, yeah. that... Uh, Unit member Pinsler has it's different significantly from what you had 
last time in terms of this is more just a, a taking, this is our charter duties currently and it's taking um, the election out. It is very different from um, the language that you had that was what everybody else was doing. So that isn't even that. It, this well, is it's a, relatively close. Well, it, no, it's significantly different in material. At, well, like you may not recognize it, you may truly believe, but it is uh, significantly different. So I just want to make certain we're all talking about the same thing. This is in essence, just leaving what we have in place and removing mm -hmm. that the city attorney is appointed. So it's not, it's not, it, it, it doesn't matter what those other cities did or the review, it, it, it's just, you know, uh, taking elected out of um, our charter. I'm not going to comment pro or con because um, I don't want to give an indication what's, which, which, which is worse. But um, are we going to be scheduled? Do we want him to come? The, to Talk to us before we send everything up, or do we just want to send it up and then interview? Well, I think the language is most important because that's what he's going to work he's through. Well, if you vote, if, if, if you agree to, then that, that, that's why I'm just being clear is, is this what we're, you know, I hadn't looked at it, so I was assuming it was the language that you proposed last time. This is, is markedly different. From the discussion it, that we had, uh, it, it seemed that the issue was elected or not elected. And from my from my non lawyer perspective, I looked at the uh, at the what the standard tended to be in other cities and looked at it and compared. It was pretty close. At least it seemed to me. Okay. So anyway, no, you can send anything you want, and I'm no, not. I just I just, just want to make certain that to the extent I'm involved, what am I sending up? And so I'm. It's it's the. Um, it doesn't have a date, but it starts with enumeration in term section 10. Right. Okay. So if that's what you, you're wanting, as opposed to what you discussed last time, that's fine. I'll send that to Mr. Colantuno and have him, uh, once we he signs the contract, have him review this and review our charter for other um, um language that may need to be changed in terms of the duties of the uh, city attorney. And then um, the... Uh... Mike, just to be clear, what, what I presented the last time was a compendium of all of the various cities. And the section that I highlighted was generally used. Right. It wasn't a recommended... Understood. I... Just... So I'm not, and then and I looked and I looked at it and I compared it to what we had in our charter and I said, well, as long as you could degenderize it and make it so that it's uh, it takes out the uh, the the uh, elected, it seemed to fit. That's I'm not quarreling it. with that at all. I just want to make the last election. I just <laughs> yes, I just I wanted to make certain that yes, what I was did. sending was what you were yeah, you know, voting to, to send to him. Um, and then he'll review that. Uh, there are other sections um, that should be changed as, as well. Um, you know, for example, removal of the elected officials yeah. other than, you know, city council. So, so that would be one, you know, uh, clear example. And then um, he'll return that and say, okay, this is, you know, this is the, there are no unintended consequences with the language and that you have a full packet of, of charter amended that you would want to propose um, for this. Custom, custom, come in, come in. Oh, yeah. I, I'm, um, I wanted to go back to understanding the dual function and, um, the, the, what I consider the unicorn problem with you being a unicorn that has that experience with both, right? So um, assuming that, you know, the, it remains, you know, just one job, city attorney elected, um, would, and I don't know how it's worked in the past, but would it be a situation where, let's say, it's somebody that has more of a civil background or somebody that has more of the prosecutorial background, the, the criminal um, does it just become a situation where they just hire a deputy that has the opposing expertise 
um, depending on what that person brings, a skill set. Yeah, not to do it well. You know, so I, I had experience in, in both. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, my predecessor was more civil, but he was a reserve deputy, mm -hmm. you know, with the sheriffs and with Hermosa Beach. And so he had uh, criminal background you know, from that perspective, mm -hmm. because you have to manage both and you have to sure. be involved yeah. in both. Who tends to run against, like who tends to be your people who run against you? They, they have dual backgrounds also, or they kind of, or they? It's one or the other. And that's the reason that like, mm -hmm. why if you, if you recommend the Long Beach model, I could see that passing because it preserves voter choices and you'll get more people running for it. So my first election I had um, a school board member or former school board member, a former council person and um, a local attorney, all of whom had civil experience and no prosecution. And second election was one of the repeat from the first we had a civil attorney, and in my last election, I was opposed by a deputy DA. And um, it gave me a market advantage in that they weren't prepared by background mm -hmm. to do both. Mm -hmm. And they would have to learn as, as things were going on, whereas I had significant background in each. And so that's the thing that would be, I could see it passing, and I don't know if it's better or worse, I only know this model, um, but I could see that it wouldn't need unicorns because you're gonna find a larger, a far larger pool of you know, civil slash municipal attorneys with no criminal prosecution background and a separately large pool um, of residents in Redondo mm -hmm. who have prosecution with the DA or the LA City Attorney's Office uh, who could run for, for prosecution. So you'd get a wider pool without removing the choice from the voters. So you wouldn't need to use the example the, the unicorn because otherwise you have to have come up through, like if I was originally a deputy DA, um, but I wouldn't have been at all qualified to take over as city attorney if I hadn't come up through two different, including this one, uh, dual function offices. Okay. Can you remember Dozyak? Yes. Um, can you bring us, or are you going to bring us back something about the Long Beach? Church? That's up to you. So they. I, I would make a, a motion that you do, but that comes later. Um, but I would like to know when they went to a dual function office. In other words, I, I don't know. Well, I know, but I'm. Yeah, I will. Uh, yeah, well, I'm. I'm just kind of throwing it. Out. I can do my own research. I'll. I'll, I'll but do my it. My point and is, I would like to know when they made that switch. Been that way a long time. Well, okay, they're an old city. I think they're second oldest in the in the county. But, uh, and, you know, that's that's that. Um, I have one. I have one other thing. I had a brain fart. So. Committee uh, Member Pinsler. Yeah, and, and also as, as part of that, and uh, uh, as neutrally as possible, having been through your position with, as a city prosecutor, with an oh. elected city attorney, mm -hmm. uh, the understanding of what happens when you disagree. Now, you, you and Jerry may have disagreed a lot. I don't know. But... Uh, when you have two electeds, like what happened in Long Beach, can happen. And what does that do to the functioning of the legal department of a city when that happens? And, uh, you know, it's not a, a, you know when when the, the the elected part of it creates what you quote unquote mandates. And if there are two people in the same office with mandates that don't agree on the mandates, that can be problematic. And it, it, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not asking you to, 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 for the resolution of it. I think that when we discuss this, that's an important issue to bring up. Yeah, I, I totally agree. And, and I'll ask uh, Doug Halpert, who's the Long Beach City Prosecutor, maybe to talk about it first. He wasn't part of that. 
I don't, I, as I said, I don't know that I favor it. Favor it. Uh, we'll have to learn more about it, but I think that is change that can accomplish some of your goals that would have a chance of um, success. And even if I come to conclusion, now I don't like that model, um, I still, <coughs> I'd still write an impartial analysis. I still wouldn't lead a campaign one or the other because it's still leaving it up um, to the voters. It's still leaving check and balances. Offhand, I would think, so when I worked for Jerry, um, he was my boss, and so it was real easy to settle any resolution because unless I found it to be unethical, which I never did, it was, you know, his, I would make suggestions, um, but that would be it. I don't think there'll be much... Um, interaction. I, I think there are a few areas I'm curious about, but the jobs are really distinct. And if you separate the jobs, like I've said to the council, um, uh, when I was frustrated about something, they were talk, talking about prosecution and they really don't know much about prosecution. And I said, you probably couldn't pick out two of my three mainline prosecutors in a lineup. And I think that's true because when you're a council person, how much of your day-to-day -day is dealing with them because they represent the people of the state of California. And that's the other distinction. Where I worry about is like uh, for fair political practice violations, the DA handles it unless it's a charter city with an elected city attorney. Yeah. So you can't give that to the city prosecutor. So does the city attorney hold on to that piece of prosecution? And I could see some sort of conflict where it's clearly within, you know, the city attorney, but I could see the city prosecutor saying, oh, well, I would have filed it on council person so-and-so. So there are areas that I'm curious to find out you know, how often do they have conflict? But it may not be, you know. Yeah. There aren't a large number of places to talk to about this because it doesn't happen very often. Well, they, again, you say that, but there. <laughs> but then if you want to make us like everybody else, I know I'm just responding, <laughs> uh, you get rid of prosecution. But I, that would be disastrous for the, for the city. And so you have to accept we're not like everybody else. And if you wanted that. to, so if you <laughs> wanted to sort of get more people running um, and they're very unique jobs. And so, you know, there'd be a lot more people who are eligible to do the city attorney job, but not prosecution and vice versa. than you, you have for both. Um, Oh, and by the way, if it stays elected, one of the things, and you haven't talked about it, but one of the things it may make sense to do, and I'm only remembering this, um, review the qualifications. There, It's five years because that used to be the length of time you needed to be a, a municipal judge, and there, it's 10 years now. So if you do that, now that will shrink the pool somewhat, but you may want to have someone who's been an attorney for, for 10 years before they're either, you know, the, you have the city attorney, what the, the council sees, which is carrying out their policy direction. There's much more work in advising the 400 plus uh, employees in their day-to-day -day duties. And then you have the city attorney who's the chief law enforcement official uh, for the city. And so I could see separating those two. On the other hand, will it cost more if you have uh, two elected officials? Will it cost more because you can't, uh, there may be some duplication of, um, of um, personnel? Can you share uh, staff? Yeah, you can't share staff. On the other hand, our, our police clerks do the filing do the clerical work for the city prosecutors. I have ever since 
I got here, and nowhere else does that occur other than Hawthorne, and they have an appointed city attorney, but they do dual function, but it's using the police records who do the, the clerical work for the prosecutor. So there may be a way for some cost savings, but I'm just <coughs> speculating because I don't know the model, but the important thing to me and why I would remain neutral is they're both accountable and elected and chosen by the people. And so they're not gonna be chosen. You look at Hawthorne, how many city attorneys that they had in, since I've worked here? Because they're constantly on the on a three, two, one way and a three, two other way. And they immediately, they change the city manager and they change the city attorney. Mm -hmm. And that's gone on uh, for years. And so you can imagine um, you know, the pressure that the city attorney is in to give um, objective, independent advice. Doesn't mean the city attorney is always right, but it's truly what he or she thinks is, um, you know, the advice. And what you're saying is they don't put their finger in the air? Put their finger I don't put my finger in there. I didn't say you. I said don't, well, I just elected, uh, you know, elected officials don't have to. Hey, does that? Um, when you bring this back, <coughs> oh, two, two or three, you already touched on like a dual staff, how much, what is, what is their flow chart look like mm -hmm. with that? In other words, do they share staff or not? And the, and the issue of salary, that's going to be a big one. Yep. Just, just so everybody understands, yep. uh, especially in this city. Um, and shame on those council people who don't know who the prosecutors are. Just, I, just I would never have said that to you. Okay. You knew who I was what, long before I ever made it over to City Hall. Um, but, you know, it, and if it's, if it's okay with the council, I will kind of tailor it to possibilities for how it could work here. So for, you know, salary, I'll just try and find out if they're equal or if one makes more well, than... Well, I was more interested in, are we going to have to make a recommendation about that? And, and how, is that how, how is that part going to work? We're going to, we're going to, we're going to say, let's just assume, and I, I'm with you, I don't really think any of this is going to pass. Uh, a dual function may pass, but I'm even skeptical of that. But the uh, issue of the uh, the pyramid of, of, of money, in other words, how is that, you know, you can't have, I'll just, you know, I guess you could have equal salary, just say, but how are we going to address that when we, make, we suggest a charter change? Yeah. You, in other words, are we going to say, it to be set by, I'll just say, prevailing wage or some bullshit. No, it's a, like so, that. So the, 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 the city in elsewhere in uh, the city council sets the the salary for all the elected I, officials. I that, so they can't change that. I think it's their their purview. You may want to have in your report um, whether you think it should be should be the same or not the same. Uh, you know, salary, there's been so much misinformation out there. Uh, sal the legal expenses are driven by things outside the city attorney's office. They're driven by accidents by staff. They're driven to, by decisions by the council. But the fact remains, a se you know, my, my position, I think, fully loaded with all benefits and PERS from financial services is like 200 an hour. That's not what I get paid, but that's everything. Well, firms are going to get paid a lot more than that, even if they're inside council. They get paid more than that in Manhattan Beach. Uh, what's going to, you'll save money only if staff or council acts, I don't not having an attorney to look at, but so I could look at, you could save money if you, perhaps part of the extra staff could be a paralegal. I, I don't, I'm not trying to save money here or, or okay. do any budgeting. I'm trying to say when we present this, are we going to present something that says you know, you're going to hire two attorneys, uh, assuming that the, the, the dual model passes, okay? We're going to civil 
criminal, they're going to, they're equals, okay? Does that mean equal in salary? Does that mean, I mean, and, and, and the other thing is too, prosecutions, we're going to have 10 year, um, I'll say minimum of um, experience. Like, and you know, ten years on the civil side. How is that going to work? So the, in, in the true sense, yeah. The only the only thing you need. These are all these are, these are all issues that will come up either from the opposition, right? Or from the you know, and so I don't know that you need to address that. Other than you may say something like, whatever salaries you set, they should be the same. Or you know, Long Beach, if it's higher for the civil than for criminal. Or vice versa, you but could. That's not really in the charter, right? The salary is in the charter. Right? Yeah, it's no, not. No, no, it's no, not. I, I, I that's that. that's to the council, but yeah. you you could give a report that goes along with it. Mm -hmm. I think the only thing you need to turn, if you wanted to make it ten years, then you would need to amend. Yeah. Um, so you would be basically separating out the city prosecutor position and creating. So if if you look at the, the proposal, you'd have A, B, C, and D, which is one would be city attorney, the other would be city prosecutor, and then you'd have two different 11.2 and 11 point, you know, whatever is next in order, and you'd segregate their responsibilities. Whatever the council wants to pay them, it's going to depend a lot on, you know, what other cities uh, get paid. Um, you guys treated Jerry horribly. He was, when I came into office, he was the lowest paid of all the comps. Um, I'm, I'm being a little facetious. I'm trying to be funny. You don't. You did. You and I were both on the council. So, so. You're being very facetious. Okay. So, but it was, it was by far the lowest paid in, um, of all the South Bay cities. And we weren't that way in any other, uh, position. And, um, and so, they're going to decide what what to get paid, and it'll be affected by things like uh, oh, what's a transparent California? Well, they include yeah. our pension liability because we're more transparent about it, and so they dump that all into the salary. So as soon as we pass that bond for that saved. Um, as Eugene likes to say, uh, a million dollars, then um, that changed our, you know, re uh, reported unfunded liability, and I think um, now it will go down. All those will make a difference, but that's not for you to decide. Mm -hmm. You may want to have a report that says whatever, if Long Beach says they're the same, like, we think they should be the same, or we think you know, one set of jobs is more than the other um, because to committee member Pinsler's, there aren't a lot of, you know, there's one to look at that has that distinction. And I frankly don't know, you know, what the mix is. But the only thing you have to do is the charter amendment, the, the language, you know, what are the duties, you know, and what are the things that go along with that? Well, details be damned. These are the important details that will that will preserve okay. the details that last only for four years. That's ultimately up to the council, and I can help with this language, the 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 mix model in a way that you have to pay Colin Tuno to do for the appointed one, because I'm staying neutral in if, if you propose a split model, whereas I'm as you know, wholeheartedly opposed to removing the choice from the voters. The part of the city council meeting that went on to that, uh, excuse me, I, uh, it was my understanding he's just going to do wordsmithing. I mean, that's what I my took. Wordsmithing, that, yeah. That's, words, what I, that's what I took away from yeah, that. Wordsmithing and then research the charter. Yes. Because if I were doing it, the first thing I'd say, well, you need to take it the, out of the language of removing no. the city yeah. attorney. So I, I want him to do that so we don't have the next city attorney, whoever he or she may be, doesn't inherit something where there's no right answer. You know, like we want to remove him. Oh, well, according to the charter, he can, you know, he or she can only be removed if they've missed X number of meetings. You could inadvertently create a situation even more impervious to change than Torrance is, where they can only be removed for missing, you know, being out of the state for a, a month. 
Are we with a, with a further topic? I mean, are we no, I, 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 I was just trying to explain what it was that I wrote. And if we want to set it aside and put it into a package, that's fine. I just wanted to get it off my plate. Can, can, <laughs> did you want me to send it to Colin Tuno sure. now? Because I won't need to send Colin Tuno the Long Beach one, as I mentioned. So I can send it to him now. And um, I, 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 I would rec recommend that. And uh, uh, then just looking through the, 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 the Long Beach Charter, you know, the, the specific duties are obviously very different from each other. And yeah. we need to know in order to give the council at least our recommendation uh, what the dynamic of it is. And, and, that, and, and like the only time I knew there was a conflict was when Tom Rees was the city prosecutor and he decided to run for city attorney. But as far as I know now, um, there aren't conflicts. But, you know, I'd, I'd ask them both to come in and see if they'd uh, speak to it because, you know, it certainly would, would be fine with me and you can get a sense of, of whether there is conflict or they just think their jobs are so uniquely different um, that it may make sense to, you know, they may have a different view and like, I can't imagine having them all within one office um, just as I can't you know, imagine, or I, I don't have any experience in the, the separate offices. Member Morocco? Okay, so I want to move this discussion forward. And I had some questions for Mr. Pinsler, which I think Mr. Forrest may be able to answer. I'm looking at the red line version that you put together, and the last two paragraphs are struck. And yes. if it's an appointed city attorney and they, I don't know, appoint a firm or whatever, you're taking, my understanding is sometimes the person that we anticipate to be the city attorney wants other people in the firm to cover stuff. And when you cut out the assistant city attorney's ability, are you really cutting into that ability of the, the, the partner at the firm saying, well, this is a small item thing. Let's have so-and-so deal with it. So I don't know what the practice is, but yeah, I think. I, I was I think gonna, yeah, I mean, I was going to disagree with that strikeout okay. because you're essentially handicapping the person from being able to, um, you know, have a team to, okay. to do the work. And, so, yeah. and then the other one was on the last paragraph. Um, I don't know why it was in there um, specifically, but I don't know why you need to pull that out completely. Um, it just, it doesn't flow with it. Yeah, I, I agree with that. I think you need to keep that catch-all okay. provision. So, so I disagree with both of the okay. last three. That's fine with me. Okay. Committee member, there's a I guess. It was Yak. What? I don't have any. Okay. Thanks. Can I just, are you looking at a red line version? Yeah, the red line uh, version. Yeah, right here. It's titled so CA for CRC track. Right. track. There are two of them. One is without the tracks. Oh, that's it. Right right. Without oh. all these red lines. But all the way to the bottom. Yeah, that's what they're yeah, the last two. The last two. Next page. I would have, I would have I frankly thought that that was part of the contract with whatever firm or city that, that you would create. So that whether it needed to be in the charter or not is is less of importance than it being in the contract with the city, uh, with with the, the the firm that you would use. It doesn't matter if it's there or it's, or it's not. It's it's uh, it seems it was somewhat boilerplate to me, but I, I would have thought that would be in the contract. I'm not commenting on 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 this, so I'm not. I'm just that's so. Which just so I know, which ones are. You which two strikeouts right under G where it's like down. It's so both, both of those. Okay. Last two okay. paragraphs of strikeouts. I would, assume the, I would assume the same thing, but I'm not, a, not an attorney, so yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it should remain in the charter. Okay, yeah. mm -hmm. that's fine. It doesn't mean you can't go into more detail on the contract. But. Mm -hmm. That's okay. If the contract change. If people in the firm leave and come and go, then <clears throat> you you have bringing back them with a new contract. Otherwise, I would think. Mm -hmm. But I, I assume the practice is that you're allowed to pick and choose within your firm, and that's the discretion. You mean, Member Dozak? Are we finalizing anything? To, when are we just going to table this, right? Either way, I, frankly, I just wanted to get off my plate. Well, I, I, I want to well, get it done. I think you finalized this. Yeah, we want to find, we're finalizing that we're going to send it to the... Colin Tuno. Outside okay, yeah. Right. Well, and then, well, and okay. then you can vote. 
at the end okay. with whether you send both, whether you send one, whether you, you know, whatever. This is Under 11.2, we're gonna change the years for... Uh, um, oh, the 10, the, the five, from five to 10? Practice, yeah, from five to 10. Well, I was only suggesting. I know you were on, but for, I, 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 I was only suggesting if in the Long Beach model that you do that because you may not want to do that if it's a firm. Well, Long Beach is five. Yeah. So I'm just the only reason in uh, when I read the last Charter Review Committee, they looked at changing it, and they specifically said we're going to leave it because it's the same as required for a judge. And with court consolidation, they eliminated the municipal court, and all judges need to be uh, practicing attorneys for 10 years. I don't know that it needs to be in this one. Uh, I would suggest you consider it if they're both elected so that you're guaranteed that. There were some cities that had three years, and part of that was the smaller the city it seemed the, the less they were asking for because it's probably hard to find people right. to do it. So especially in the middle of the desert. So. Yeah. So there there there, there were some that. there were a number of cities with three years. Okay. So I I don't have I don't see the tie into the judge. You can be admitted to the U.S. Supreme Court right. with five right. years experience, and I think if you're qualified to appear before the U.S. Supreme Court, you should be qualified. To, to be a I'm to not be a arguing, so I'm fine just, with the five years. It was just I was just something that they mentioned in the last report, which the reason for not changing it was no longer exists. So okay. So plus, the, plus, as you mentioned before, the longer you make it, the the, the smaller the pool. That is true. So this would be this is finalized for now, right? Uh, with with the exception of to to, the, to uh, remove the uh, strikeout yes. from the last two paragraphs, which is fine with me. And then we're going to look at the Long Beach model at the next meeting. How do we? Agenda, if, agenda can we do it at the next meeting? I'm sorry. Long Beach? Um, let me, uh, I think I will, I will in fact, I think be here now on the 25th. Let me, um, I'll have the Long Beach, you know, um, the org chart and the, you know, charter sections for you all. It'll depend on their schedule, whether I can get uh, one uh, or both of them. It may be best to have them on separate nights so they don't feel constrained to disagree with uh, their counterpart. Um, so let me let me. Uh, Hence the problem. <laughs> we, we do have a Hence maybe, maybe, the, hey, you know, it, it, it may not be a problem. They are. May or may not. They're really about. different jobs. I mean, I I can think of issues where if they became big, there would be an issue, but they're very different. It's all good until it's not. Mm -hmm. Yes. Comes with every yeah. Day. It's worth exploring. <laughs> you have time. You have time. To next agenda, we have the review of session nineteen point five, and also the school board, and also article. Let's discuss, 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 the, discuss the treasury next treasury next, next meeting as well. Is it time for the attorney at yeah. that meeting? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It's okay. So I, I personally don't want to be here for five years. So I would. I, 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 I agree with you. We should do our work and just move it on. Moving on. Going back to the issue you raised about the consultants. Did I take a pill when I wasn't here last month? <laughs> <laughs> this has not been the attitude. This has not been the attitude in the past. Uh, you missed a little bit, yeah. You guys must have some pills. <laughs> just, I, I don't want to lose the thread on the issue you raised about the consultant and whether you wanted to have a discussion or have. Well, that was up to the co committee whether you want the consultant to come to the next meeting and we can give the, our input to the consultant so when they, he analyzes all the materials, he's, he at least gets a sense of this group or do we want to just send it to him, let him analyze it, and then come back to us? And that's your thoughts? My, my takeaway from this. What's your contract so, with him? It, it's, it, it can be either one. I, I think if it were me doing his job, I think it would be good to do the job and then return it to you for, for input and say, no, what we were thinking was this, or why did you put this? We hadn't thought that through, and that might be more productive. <laughs> so. Yeah, he has access to the record. Yeah. yeah. So. Okay, so okay. now the, with, uh, what happens next? The promoter moved from this item. We need a so public the, comment. Oh, public comment, public comment. Are we, are we, any more are comment? Are we going to make a motion or not? No. No. Or is it public. just staying as? 
think we could. I, I, it would be so good to make a motion to direct me to send. Yeah, um, I will make that motion. The items in CA for CR three, the the red, you know, the red folder red, and the, the other one it, it, to call to know, and then um, have him return without the without the the uh, strike out of the last two paragraphs. Correct. So that's that's the motion. Is, is there a some, that. okay? Um, public comment. No public comment for the record. Uh, no, 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 any comments? It was the same the same question, right? Just making yeah, no sure. Comment. Got it. Just making sure. All right. No problem. Um, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Second. Okay. Great. Okay, so it passes. It passes. Um, so motion passes to to put that to bed. To put <laughs> to move with the correct term. What's the correct term to say? Motion passes with the motion to move forward or with the motion to add the Motion to move to the to the, to the next meeting, right? Okay. Continue it to the next meeting. Mm -hmm. Motion to continue was, was so approved. Mm -hmm. Okay, now we're item, I think we're item J now, J2. Discussion for possible action regarding Article 6, Section 6.5, vacancy declared by the council. Let's see. Again, what are we? I think that's the one with the residency. And yeah, it's the, it's. Uh, it would, I I would suggest it be um, more broadly defined in the future because you need to be able to talk about more than the than. Uh, we look at it. I think it's residency, and I think it's yes. um, it was the, moral turpitude. Yeah. And you'd already decided moral turpitude. Um, but I, I, I think it's not just. I've got a different issue. Yeah, I think it got moved to June, right? I didn't realize that we were. Well, yeah, I think it is because we it's were discussing when when we got it together about June. it. Yeah, but I, if I could raise another issue, and that's the absent from four meetings. Now that this was written during a time when people physically had to be here, and. The, uh, the ability to be remote could be that this person is never here, other than they have, may have a residence, but they're never physically here. Is that a legitimate city council position? Well, an absence is an absence. I mean, no, it, no, if they are, if I know, they are, I, that's what I'm saying. If, even if you do it by remote and you're not there, you're absent. No, you're not. Not under the new the rules that they have now. Yeah, yeah but under the rules, rule, the, the Brown Act rules are about, still limited. Like about they can't be indefinite. They can only do like two. But those can always be changed, and this is the charter is mm -hmm. you know so so I, I get the question like what else do you want to put in place? So for example, in the clerk and treasurer and city attorney, you can't be absent from the state for more than 30 days without the approval of the um, of the city council. So is that the sort of thing that you're putting in? There's that, but also if, as a city council member, if you could spend your entire four years being a remote member of the, of the council, is that proper service? You may have a residence, but you're never there. So is is that legitimate? I I, I don't think uh, the state law has. It wouldn't surprise me. Let's just say state law doesn't deal with technology particularly well anyway. But there may very well be a situation where a person literally doesn't have to be here. Well, but can the, attend the, thir the meeting. Yeah, but the thirty days would would like. Uh, are you thinking of some other the council members? Not not. But I'm not saying. Okay, I didn't express that. Are you saying? amend this to have the same provision be, so the council is don't miss four, four meetings. The other three are, can't be out of the state uh, mm -hmm. for 30 days. Do you want to have the council be don't miss meetings and don't be out of the state for 30 days? I, so I'm, what, I'm however aware. state law changes what the, the limits on, you know, um, virtual participation, are you, I, I, I'm not certain if they agree, if your fellow committee members agree there's a problem, is that the type of fix you're looking for or something else? 
All, all I'm saying is that this was written during a time when there was no other way to be a mem member of the council than to be here. Now it's possible to be a member of the council and not be here. That's what the, the, the law says now, as I understand it. Now, it, if you set it for 30 days, does that mean that if you're, if you're living in, uh, if, if, you're, if you're in uh, Incline Village and you step across the border and you go back, then you're in California. Well, it'd be Redondo for 30 days, so you'd have to drive from right, so, so, there so to fly, Redondo. But I, I'm not suggesting fly fly out. I, I'm not suggesting anything. Like, what what are you thinking for eliminating that problem? Is my uh, question. The issue I, I'm, I'm raising here is we can't be exclusive in dealing with this. Somebody else has got to be dealing with this issue. So, is there any guidance? that someone, anyone is providing as to dealing with this new paradigm of attending, attendance. Not in their charters. I mean, it, you, you saw Not this. Not in their charters, but, right. but someone's thinking about this somewhere. Somewhere, right? someone. Can you remember Morocco? So I actually came to the last council meeting because the meeting before I saw two members of council on Zoom and it just seemed this side of the, the room was stacked. Nobody was sitting over there. Mm -hmm. And I think you, I was going to suggest that they at least have to, they cannot be remote more, they have to, no, it can't be remote two consecutive meetings. If you want to do it once because this is a problem, great. But it, two consecutive meetings is kind of, you're not doing your constituents any favor by not being able to have an exchange proper exchange with people in the public. So um, I, I agree with you, there's a problem. Unfortunately, I think it's really something that's newly developed mm -hmm. and the council is really the, the people who set their own rules with regards to how they do it. I just don't think it's, I don't think it's good form to have somebody who's, and this is for the attorneys, who have trials all over the place and then do everything remotely. So. Um, it's further to find out, like the time, so two weeks, every two meetings, three meetings, four meetings. Well, that's why I said every, it, you but, can't do it two weeks in a row. So. That could be like a month. That's like a month now, right? So couldn't it be out? I, 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 I guess the timing's be. I frankly yeah. wouldn't move it any, any less than four, four meetings. But all, all I'm thinking about is the possibility mm -hmm. and how do we get around that new paradigm that this charter hasn't thought of because it wasn't a legitimate thing to think of at that particular time. Now, now we have this possibility of being able to be remote all the time. Right. You could literally for four years yeah. be remote and you were considered present. And I don't think that, I, I, I'm not sure that that's, that's what- not, That's not what the Brown Act says. The Brown Act that's says if you have, you're limited to two times uh, of, being, a of being absent. Of teleconferencing. No, 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 of teleconferencing. So there is a limit. There, per month or per uh, year? No, per year. It's twice per year. Then, I think. Then, then they, then, I think they make an exception for Zoom? I think, I think it's an exception now. Yeah, for, yeah, for Zoom. Yeah. But, but there's a limit. There's a limit to a member of teleconferencing. There's, there, it has to be an emergency or, there, there, or you have to have just cause. And there's, there's limitations to it. We're not in the COVID era anymore. There's there are limitations to um, teleconferencing. And you have to have a physical quorum, like you have to have a majority quorum in person um, before. Um, so you, yeah, so you would not be able to like, everybody's out, everybody's doing it. I think so like you need to have a physical oh, presence. Can you bring quorum. some of those yeah, rules can, to us? I, yeah, I didn't know it was a rule. We can look at ourselves. Yeah, that's, a, yeah that's just the current brown act rules. So yeah, there's a limit for sure. It's, um, I'm just wondering if Mr. I want to Pinsler, say it's AB, it's AB 361. And that's just for the Brown Act, right? That's this is about, is there, you could, you could tie this all to whatever changes are ever made in the Brown Act. Uh, we could be subject to those rules. Which we are yeah. subject to the Brown Act. Um, yeah, so, yeah, you cannot, under the Brown Act, you cannot um, teleconference every meeting. There are limits. Is anybody monitoring that, Eleanor? I mean, you you know that. Well, actually, um, it's AB three sixty one. Yeah. Well, we have a rule of conduct that the city council approved. I was trying to look for it because I mm -hmm. I don't see the current one. And they had 
brought up the um, teleconferencing. Um, so there's certain, you know, like if you're oh, yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. have a medical yeah. issue, they have to, um, you know, provide whoever's the first one. There's only, mm -hmm. we have, per charter, mm -hmm. three people have to be here right. to, mm -hmm. for a quorum. Um, but they have to physically be here. Physical. And then the other two uh, can provide, they have to pro give the information to us before we do the agenda. Mm -hmm. And it has to be on the agenda. And then also um, they have to post it wherever they're at. So that if the public happens to be where they're at, they can actually be part of the meeting. I know it's this I've is heard that level. He said that level. That's the old. That's, 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 that's the traditional like, brown ash. That's what we we you created. adopted that. We adopted that mm -hmm. on our rule of conduct. But I was just trying to look to see if there was a certain amount of um, meetings that they can do in your roles. As I can't. I can't find so it. Two four four nine. Two four four nine. Maybe two four four nine. So which twice a year? Twice a year. Mm -hmm. That's like like twenty percent. Like they, they have certain rules about consecutiveness. So, AB or SB? AB. It's AB, AB two four four nine. And is that a calendar year or a fiscal year or how do they? It's calendar year. Yeah, I'll look it up later. But do you track that when they're they're doing it by remotely? Um, at least tell them that they've now hit their limit on it. No, I, I, there's a there's on the rule of conduct there is a limit in there, and that's what I was trying to find. But I think it's more than two. Well, if it's inconsistent with the Brown Act, the Brown Act is the one that supersedes that, right? I'm assuming. Right. It's the, it, as far it, as it, I know, it, what I thought too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can't find it. There's a process that we have, mm -hmm. so that way, first come first serve. Mm -hmm. That kind of thing. Yeah, it's limited to two mm -hmm. virtual attendances based on just cause per just calendar cause year. Just cause or emergency. Mm -hmm. And then there's like a total. Mm -hmm. Well, since we're meeting to discuss the residency and it's the section, maybe we should get a copy of whatever Eleanor's consulting and compare it mm -hmm. and then come back to this group with a recommendation. Sounds reasonable, yeah. Hmm? Sounds reasonable. I mean, that's. I'm looking at the other half of the subcommittee to see if she's in agreement with that. <laughs> I'm nodding, yeah. Yeah, no, I think that it's related. The related issue, so. Is that okay, Mr. Pinsler? Okay, it's fine. Okay. So I'll bring the rules. And, but, but keep in mind, virtual attendance is not an absence. So that four, that number four absence. is related to absence. Right. It's absence. not an absence. Yeah, but the, you only have two virtual calls per calendar year based on the Brown Act. Mm -hmm. Any further discussion on this topic? Okay. Yeah. Are we no, I, no, I, no. I move what, to what, table it to the is, next meeting then. Okay. okay. Is there a second? Second that to, to table it, yes. Ele electronic attendance. Oh, I know. I just didn't know what you'd resolve. But, but the, the important thing is it's the charter and, you know, the rules on virtual attendance have changed a lot in the past few years. And you have one that's only in effect through the end of this year and then you have and that will likely change in the future and the charter mm -hmm. needs to be longer standing so that's always saying it really doesn't matter so much what the state rules are it's what do we want in the charter no matter what happens in the state we think this would be bad this would remove the individual from the community and that's what if anything you would be proposing in the any charter amendment dealing with that AB 2449 is a one year bill. It, yeah, it just it, covers it's one year. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, but it could, again, it, it could change. Yeah, it, it, it yeah. No, so, no, it, we have to assume for a charter, mm -hmm. which hopefully will last longer than one year or two years, mm -hmm. um, you want to decide what you want to recommend to the voters and, if anything, and have them pass. That's why we'll, when we discuss it, we'll bring it back to you and we can discuss it. If we send it up to the council, they can discuss it and consistent with their rules of conduct. So, yeah. Okay. yeah so the rules of conduct says, I it finally came up, uh, limits to nine meetings per year per council member, subject to council approval thereafter. But that was last drafted before the changes in law. Right. Right. That was so. during during the COVID. Mm -hmm. And we still, I think, correct me if I'm wrong, I still think we have. A city issued emergency regarding COVID. 
the state ended theirs at the end of February. Mm -hmm. The county ended theirs at the end of March. Mm -hmm. But I don't recall seeing that the city council revoked the um, the yeah. state the the local yes. emergent state of emergency. And you didn't link it. You didn't link it to the county or. I just don't. I I didn't do anything, but I just. I, mean, I just, look at the language because yeah, some of them I just are I don't I don't I don't recall, mm -hmm. and so I'm just saying I I don't know. Certainly, I will revisited. Yes, yeah. uh, I think it was associated that they had these meetings where they were renewed the emergency powers, and I seem to recall that there were different. There were some that you have to do every thirty days, and so we're keeping our dining deck and our dining deck program and. A uh, Revere Village can only exist while there's a, a state of emergency as approved by the Coastal Commission. There's certain emergencies that have to be done for the, oh, what is it on the improvement on the, the work the county is doing on the, the um, one of the pathways down to the, to the, to the beach, yeah. And so there are various Renewals. I just don't recall offhand because I'm not involved in that process. If we ever, um, if the city ever revoked the general statewide, because um, it has, I don't remember it happened, but the point, yeah, but if the language were triggered, it was tied to the state or county, then it would have ended. But something tells me they wanted to preserve more of their control over it, so it may not be tied to that. I have a I feeling there's I... a memo coming. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, <what> conversation <laughs> with the city manager when he's back in the state, so. I have, question, I have a question about vacancies and absences, accommodation for, like, illnesses and things of that nature. Is that addressed anywhere in the charter, or? So it is okay. for, um, for differently. I don't recall if it is by the uh, you have personal experience. I do. So if in the section on that will need to be amended for um, your current bill, uh, if you're unable, so I had a stroke and couldn't speak in, in complete sentences, and uh, the council had to uh, grant me up to six months um, to, and then if I couldn't return within six months, then, then I would have had to resign. So they granted the six months. With the mayor, it's different because the, the charter created the mayor pro tem position, and there's not a requirement that the mayor meet, uh, attend meetings because the mayor can do much of uh, his job you know, at home. He can veto mm -hmm. resolutions. He can veto ordinances. He can appoint members to the committee. So there's no hurry. So he was, as he battles his cancer, he was on, you know, whatever his ability, what would help his recuperation. He wasn't tied to the six months that, that I was tied to. And the council appears to be just, if the, vote, the council approves it, which could be problematic, because what if a majority of the council isn't in favor or is political opponents of that? of that council person. So there are all sorts of different, uh, but it makes sense because the city's in real trouble if the clerk or the attorney or treasurer can't do their job that needs to be done on a day-to-day -day basis for longer than six months. So it drives a nice balance between accommodating uh, an emergency and <coughs> preserving the right to the voters to have their full-time people or part-time terms of the treasurer with the mayor can go on long-term and it specifically mentions in the mayor pro, pro term, you know, long-term disability where, where the mayor pro tem can, uh, it's not just if a mayor is on vacation. I don't recall offhand the city clerk has anything different than, I mean, the city council has anything different than the, you know, has to be excused by the, by his fellow council people. So if you think that should change in any of the above, then certainly you should explore that as a committee. Okay. I have a motion that was seconded to move this to the next meeting. Yeah. Thank you, Susan. Um, additional public research, uh, a public comment. 
None. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, so we approved moving the agenda item J2, um, discussing section J5 to the next, um, next, next meeting. Item J3, discussion of impossible action regarding how items get placed on the agendas. Is this for us or for, yeah. for the city? I don't know. What, I, what, I didn't what, put it on. I, 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 I just put it on a long time. You know, when you guys made that list. And, oh. Is this uh, a one step, two step issue? <laughs> so no, I, don't, I think so, it's council, but um, Ralph, I mean, emailed me and said, we're supposed to put these on. So I, you know. So it could be on. either. So. One step, two step, which it makes no sense. Now, you're so collegial, one step works. Uh, the one step, two step came about from a point in time where, and this may be the other topic, where um, the they were having battles on the council on what to put on the agenda. What a shot. And uh, <laughs> they were having full on discussions about whether to put it on that involved the merits of whatever they were proposing. And that is not within the exception of the Brown Act, that you can have a real brief discussion. I want to agendize X, and if a majority of the council votes, then X goes on the agenda unless vetoed by the mayor. But this was turning into a full-on discussion. And the idea behind a two-step is that staff isn't devoting a lot of energy doing a full report for something that doesn't have a, a majority even willing to discuss it. You're very collegial. There's, now that we're through the management stuff, there's not a lot of staff time, and, and so that works. I don't know if the idea was you wanted to discuss putting in the charter, you know, how things get agendized for a, a council. You could do it where we discussed when we discussed all the options you you can have any one person can put stuff on the agenda well the problem with that is staff is going to spend a lot of time in something that never is receiving file and so it's like is that the best use of time so if there that that we were discussing like we're not sure exactly what this issue is um, so you may want to just Punt it till next month when Ralph is back and yeah. see. My, if my concern, my concern has always been that if you're voting to not do something, you are taking a vote, which is violative of the Brown Act. But the 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 court in the case that I've showed you on multiple occasions, I know, I know. ruled different. And I'm not saying that the court was right, but they're the court, so we have to I, follow I, them. I understand. And, and so if. But the, it's clear it has to be a brief discussion. Do you want to talk about it or not? Not, hey, I think this is a great idea. We should talk about it because A through Z, and then someone has a counter rebuttal. No, A through Z, and they're talking about the merits now mm -hmm. uh, as, as of the item as opposed to whether we should just have a conversation. And that's where the two-step came from because then it's like, all right, We'll agendize it so you can have that debate before staff gets involved. You don't need a two-step as a group because um, you're very collegial and, and it's like, okay, fine, we'll talk about it. And then the person discuss it and decide to go further or not. Commissioner Morocco? Okay, so we don't have the same time pressure we did with the other stuff. So we're, we, I think the two-step seems to work. I was curious about the process here. So my experience with my commission is that we, the staff person is the person who ultimately decides what the agenda, even though the administrative procedures say it's in consultation with the chair. But how is it getting on the agendas here? Are you just taking whatever we say and are you the one who's doing it? Is the city manager doing it? It's, it's, a, it's a combination. You. It's you and, and, the, and, and the council. The council has put some of this stuff on um, in two directions of staff, I think in November and in January, and that's where stuff appear. And whatever you put on and whatever comes from future agenda. Initially, it was the city manager giving a list of things that they wanted all the administrative stuff and then the other things the council did. And I think... 
The first resolution was a concrete list. This is what you, you have to decide and give us monthly reports. Right. And then it became when you wanted to, so I told you after the first meeting, okay, you want to meet more than once, there's a time crunch, I'll take it to the council. Uh, someone spoke to the council before then, and so the next meeting they said, well, we want all the whole resolution looked at, and then they gave you till November, talk about anything you want, including these specific topics, and give us one report in November. And ever since then, it's just been things that have come directly from the council or things directly from you. As far as I'm aware, there's no issues that are have been on there other than um, other than that have come from staff. Yeah, actually, what I think I'll do is um, next time is actually take the verbiage from your minutes. So that way you guys will be refreshed of what, because we put, all the stuff we put on is related to conversations you've had from prior me from prior meetings. Because mm -hmm. I know there's sometimes I put something on and you're like, this is done. And I'm like, our minutes didn't stay <laughs> Right, <cat."> and so <laughs> just, so, yeah, logistically, just they prepare it and then they send it for me for review. And I would say like, for example, one we had to display, I thought that was done. Well, they put it in the minutes. Okay, we'll put it on. And then you said, no, that one's right. done. And when I saw, you know, the... When I saw this item, okay, what is, <laughs> I'm not certain what it's about, yeah. but she indicated. So it may be best to just. Uh, yeah, I thought it was about the council. Yes. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. I, I just, I it's, don't know. Yeah, so we sent it this. to the chair and he said, what about these two? And so I'm like, okay, so we'll put those in. So that's, I think what I'll do next time, based on the conversation we had at the beginning of what you guys um, wanted to put on, we'll, we'll do that. Can you put, put maybe minutes. punt this until. June, so that you can discuss under future agenda topics whether you want to do this. And then in June, you're going to have the Long Beach model, I mean, May, yeah. Long Beach model, feedback from Colin Tuno and, and the, uh, school the clerks and, and the clerks. school board. So it's, it's going to be a weighty um, agenda anyway. So it may make sense to move it to June. Is there a motion for that? I'll move. Second. Okay, thank you. Public comment? Okay. None. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any, any opposed? Okay. And just it, just for scheduling, there, there's a chance that I may make may miss the July meeting. So if you can avoid putting anything that you need me for, that'd be helpful. Okay. Um, item J three um, discussion. Of, if po so we approve moving discussion and possible action regarding how to get items placed on agendas. Seven. That's what we just talked about. And we, moved, we moved it to, we voted unanimously to move it to the next meeting. Right. June, I thought. June. June, sorry, June. Future agenda. Future, okay, J4, future agenda, future agenda item type of topics. I have a question on this one also. It's, it's confusing to me. If I, I have a topic I want to bring up. Am I going to bring it up in this section over here, or am I going to save it for member items and referral to staff? Now that you've agendized it, you can put it, put, it's, it's, it, okay. it's essentially... Um, yeah, you can you can put it on. Okay, then I have a proposal, and I no, it can't be a full on proposal. To, no, but, it, it's, but it's, like, it's, I, we I want, want to explain to it in yes. a way that That's people understand it, That's so that we totally can vote fine. to discuss it. So, and I haven't talked to it over with the city manager, and I really want to be able to explore that with him. But and I also don't know what the practice is in the in the city already. But I think it would be beneficial to put in the charter because I think that the mayor and council can interfere with staffing. And I think you're telling me if my assumptions are correct by nodding your head. But it would be nice to have periodic departmental management audits part of the discussion so that we can have more transparency, certain accountability. And so I would like to agendize having a discussion about um, having periodic departmental management audits done on, an, on an irregular basis. I'm all in favor of the discussion, but I'm not really sure that that's something that we can put in the charter. Well, if, I mean, if city council has one employee, right. and he employs everybody else underneath him. So how does that get into the charter then? Because the council has no ability to 
interfere with the employment, but the public has a right to know what's going on within that's all a different the department. That's a, that's so a that's different. the part I'm trying to get into the charter. It's like, let's have something so the public and, and that you don't have the, the tension between the council and the city manager. It's basically the- well, I'm gonna let Bob speak here, but, but, I, but I, I think this is getting too far down in the weeds. The cities that do this have a, a city controller. Right. Basically city control, that's what city controllers do is that they're, they're primarily audit. Right, San Diego is a good example. Yeah. Okay. So, so the this, this city council can, cre can create a city controller position if they wish. It can cre be created in the charter and be uh, uh, given to the, to the council to do. But if you put it in the charter, then you have, to, there may not be an, a, 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 a long-term need for it. Well, so, said, I just want to bring it up for discussion. I want to talk to the city manager specifically to see what his views well, on. Do, do you want to? Do, do, no. Yeah. Right. So, so how about how about this? Do you want to uh, have a discussion to uh, see if it's worth putting a city controller position into uh, the charter? Because that would do That's the what function it, uh, that you're talking about without. Um, without any of this, the other consequences. And we can look at alternatives. Without getting into the discussion, because we're, I'm not, I'm so vote, I was I'm trying to end by, <laughs> by proposing. <laughs> when, we put, when we discuss the city controller and putting it in, in the charter, okay? If we did that, right? Would we then be electing? Or, we can talk uh, about that. That's my that, point. That's, that's, this is my point. This is a big can of worms, my friend. Yes, I, and I've actually researched okay. some of it, okay. and I go with the League of California cities on this one. Um, there's different models out there. I'm okay, so I, I think everyone Long Beach has their own model again. San Diego is called the City Auditor. Um, there are some other cities. City Controller. And there's even an organization that's called. Um, IPAs, which is in Innovation, Performance, Management, and Audit. Um, so you want to have a, again, you want to speak about this topic in the next, in the, in the future meeting? Maybe yeah, I want to add that to the discussion, but I want to, I want to, before we fully vent it, I want to talk to the city manager, because again, well, there may be something already in place. So that, we can, you, we can agendize it and you can present at it. You know, so uh, the idea, so the motion would be appropriate is to agendize in June. Uh, the consideration of a city controller or auditor uh, in the charter. Right. right. Okay. I would like to just have periodic department management audit that, that, without that. necessarily a title next to it so that we can have a little bit more flexibility on the discussion as far then, as Then make, make your motion. Trans transparency. Yeah. Um, that we explore discussion about having periodic department management audits done in the city of Redondo Beach. On what date? What? On what date? So that the clerk knows to the agenda. On. Which agenda? It looks like the May's got the, the more flexibility. June's pretty packed. So no, May, no, I May, will May, pack. May's packed. I don't know that June has... A lot. I'm looking at the one that's, that we yeah, have. June has moral turpitude and oh, also clerk. City, city clerk. So May looks like it is. I think at that point I can come back to you all and say, okay, I've talked to the city manager. Yes, let's pursue a discussion and we can put it on a different day or no. After talking to the city manager, it's not worth pursuing and you guys can decide if you want to pursue it or not at that point. So May would be, and I, I'm suggesting putting on the May agenda. You make the motions. I just did. Okay. Does anyone have a second? I'll second it because I'm, I'm looking forward to the discussion. <laughs> <laughs> public comment? No public comments. All, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? So we approve to add the periodic, periodic, periodic audit, audit of city employees. Not, no, no, department management audit. Department management audit. It's management, management, not necessarily the employee itself. So. Department management audit in the June meeting. Thank you. Mm -hmm. More and more. Anything else? So, item K, item K member, member items and referrals to staff? No. Nope. I have one. And it's, mm -hmm. it's more of a report back, I think. 
at the council meeting, they gave us a deadline for the next report. Um, I want to say it's October, but I don't remember off the top I, of my head. I don't, I don't remember that. No. Yeah, they did. That they, they did. They uh, did. But the resolution, it, it just happened last Tuesday, and the resolution <laughs> right. isn't written yet, and it was kind of a wandering motion. Uh, so we don't have the minutes yet, the draft minutes yet. And Nicely put. <laughs> <laughs> and I want to have those before I watch the meeting and draft the resolution. So uh, I'm thinking, I, I thought it was maybe November again, but maybe not. Okay. Well, I just wanted the group to know that there is another report yeah, we'll, we'll bring on, it will be the resolution. You know, when, once it's completed, that will be definitely... Um, uh, by your we call that discussion. I didn't think they came to a conclusion. Member <laughs> Pinzer, uh, just the, uh, when I handed in the uh, uh, the document on the city attorney, I also sent in a document on uh, with a uh, draft line on uh, a track line on on the city clerk. So <laughs> it's it's already prepared for for right. June's meeting. So just okay, and we're we're start. going to have the discussion for June's. Yeah, meeting. so that, that, that's okay. in, in place and everything was fine. Oh, there's one other thing on it. Um, it. This also pertains, it's more informational. So they're discussing at the May 2nd meeting, I believe, whether Norma becomes the permanent person from District 5 and there's a swap between Ms. Wonderly and you and um, whether or whether the city council member is going to put in somebody completely new as the alternate. I think also for Eugene's spot, they're doing the same thing at the May 2nd meeting, is that? I believe I saw an item about that on the agenda, is that correct? Yes, that is correct. A, a draft agenda, the agenda won't be finalized till tomorrow. Yeah. Okay, so just, just be aware that that's that, that, a discussion one anyway. What? I saw the discussion one. City Council meeting. Yeah, it was, and, uh, and, and they were talking about was, removing uh, Ms. Ms. Wonderly for failure to attend these meetings. So um, it was just kind of unusual. So I wanted you guys to know. Okay. All right. Item adjournment. To adjourn. Second. Public, the public comment? Public comment? You can adjourn. You have to wake <laughs> them up. Comment on this one. <laughs> yeah. Anybody who stops us is not going to get it. Hi. All right. <laughs> um, so the meeting is adjourned at 8.52 p.m. Um, Great. April 27th. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.